Do you know who you are? When was the last time someone asked you not what you've done, but who you've become? Do you know who you are? I was born Juliana Rojas on October 18, 1990 in Pamplona, Colombia. My birth mother was deaf. She was not very well off. She was young. So when the doctors handed me to her, she simply waved her arms as if to say that she could not take care of her baby. 20 years later, this kind of inspired me to go on my own journey. When adopted kids are adopted, we typically get asked a lot of the same questions with the most popular one being, do you know who your biological parents are? And sometimes, even with some of my closest friends, I say, you know, I just don't know you well enough to answer that. But then I think, well, geez, I don't have a lot of friends after that. But there's a certain question that I realized that I hadn't really known the answer to. And that was, when did your parents tell you that you were adopted? So I was thinking about this. I was at home with my mom sitting at the kitchen table and I asked her, when did you guys tell me I was adopted? And she was like, oh, Lex, you know, we've always told you, you've always known. I was like, yeah, but when did I actually understand what that meant? So actually, I think that this is truly where my story starts. Jazzercise. I'm talking about Jane Fonda, 90s hair, bright pink leotards. Apparently, when I was around four or five years old, I started doing this thing where I'd go to jazzercise class with my mom, and after she'd be done working out, I'd go up to her and her friends and I'd start saying, I'm not from this mommy. I'm from a different mommy, but I don't know who that mommy is. And of course, these people are like, uh, should we be worried about this woman? So my mom and I were laughing at it at the kitchen table, but I actually realized that this is probably one of the very first times that I questioned who I was and where I came from and what I was all about. So you could say that this launched me into a film career to go back to make a documentary about my adoption story, to find out who was involved in my first year and a half of life. Here's a brief look. I might have not even had a life had it not been for all the people connected in my story. Thank you. The film is called La Loteria de la Vida, or The Lottery of Life. And this is a story about me trying to find out who all was connected in my first year of life. What happened? What type of characteristics did these people have to make the choice to take care of me after I was left at a hospital? I guess you could say, honestly, that this fully encompasses everything that I've been setting out to make for the last year. But I want to backtrack for a second. Usually when we think of adoption, we think of a story, or um, we define it as when a biological parent takes care of a child. However, I found this kind of extended version that I think is also very fitting for this conference. Adoption can also refer to the act of embracing ideas, habits, or free kittens. <laughs> now, I'm not really as good as a free kitten, but ironically, my mom is allergic to cats, so she got me instead. <laughs> Growing up, I had a fairly typical American childhood. I played every sport possible wearing jerseys that were twice my size. I had my run with my equestrian days, but that didn't really go well. And I was put through every costume possible growing up from my parents. In, in middle school, I was a fairly average kid. I had braces. Um, I actually joined the chess club, but we don't really talk about that much. And in high school, I ended up getting um, I was fairly, you know, average also. I got good grades. 
And then I came to apply to colleges. I got into Purdue, so I came here. Uh, my freshman year, I declared my major as film. And believe it or not, they do teach film here at Purdue. My sophomore year, I was involved with a program called Old Masters, and it brings back prestigious alumnus to campus. This man up here was involved in a couple really cool projects. Has anyone seen the movie Up? Yeah. Yep. This is the man behind Man's Best Friend, Doug. He has worked on tons of Pixar movies. He's an animator, screenwriter, voice actor, and director, and he still works there today. My junior year, I ended up interning for the London 2012 Olympics, and this is my team and I in front of the, the torch after the final opening ceremonies night, and this is a night I will never forget. My senior year, I ended up running for student body vice president alongside my running mate, Joe, and we were elected. It was fun, but at the same time, kind of imagine Steven Spielberg being uh, President Obama's right-hand man, so, but it was good. After college, though, something kind of happened to me that I wasn't really expecting at all, and that was this. I had no idea what I wanted to do, even after all of these experiences. However, I did remember a time back in my sophomore year when I had seen a film called The Human Experience. And this was a documentary about a couple brothers that had gone on all these experiences around the world. When I watched this, something happened to me. I kind of call this a trigger, meaning that it stuck with me so much that when I graduated, I went back to this moment. I decided, why not apply? So I ended up applying to a company called Grassroots Films in Brooklyn, New York. After I applied, all they could offer me was an unpaid internship. You can imagine when I told my parents, they weren't very happy about this. <laughs> they didn't understand why I wanted to move to a city that I've never been to and take a job that I wouldn't be getting paid at. Because let me emphasize, unpaid New York City. It doesn't roll off the tongue at all. But I knew that in my heart of hearts that this was the right thing, that I should do this. So I packed up my bags, found a couple Craigslist roommates, and moved out to Brooklyn, New York. In every film, there is a process that uh, every, every movie or every story that you see goes through. And that can be broken down into three parts, and that is pre-production, production, and post-production. And yes, it's really complicated. But I'm gonna talk about that a little bit tonight. Pre-production, this is the preparation for any project or piece of work or experience that you're doing. This is the dirty work, it's the research that you do to enable to get you to that next part. When I was at Grassroots for a couple months, uh, I remember a day when I was sitting with the, di the director who I'd gotten to know really well at that point, and I told him about my story, about how a couple years prior, I had gone back to Columbia with my adoptive dad, and I had a piece of paper with a couple scratch names on it, and ended up finding out that I had a foster family for my first year of life. I took this piece of paper to the agency worker that we were with, and she came back on the phone and she said, you have a foster mother, her name's Maria, and she'll be here in an hour. So I spent that day in Pamplona meeting this woman who had taken care of me. I told the director this and he said, Lexi, that's amazing. You have to do something with this. And again, this is kind of another one of those trigger points that I mentioned that this stuck with me. I saw that he believed in me and so I sat there and I was like, I might actually be able to do this. So, I launched a Kickstarter campaign because after I told my parents about New York, I told them about this, they were like, yep, you're on your own this time. So I raised money that I needed to get to Columbia, uh, gathered up a small film crew, and then went. Here's a couple pictures of Maria, uh, my foster mom, and myself. She had still kept a couple of my baby shoes a uh, picture of me from my first year old birthday party. She's a very special woman. After I did this proper uh, research and preparation, it launched me to the experience part, and this is production. This is kind of the heart of what you do, of your work, and it's probably one of the most important parts because you have to be in the experience. When I first got to Columbia on the first, one of the first few nights, I was having an interview with Maria, 
and we're sitting on this couch, and I'm all the way over here, and she's right next to me. But I'm very timid, because this person to me is still kind of a stranger. I didn't get a lot of hours with her when I first met her. But I, I kind of noticed that I was more focused on the lighting. I was focused on how the camera was. I was focused on how I looked and if I sounded OK. But what's interesting is by the end of this experience, we're coming back from a day's event, and my head is on her shoulder. Because I realized that this person was so special to me that she had done everything she could to keep me alive while I waited for someone to adopt me. And that was powerful. And that hit me. So at the end, I wasn't, I didn't really focus on the camera. I didn't know about the lighting because I was living this experience the best that I could. There's a quote by a, a podcast host, Krista Tippett. She uh, hosts a podcast called On Being. And she says, you can disagree with another person's opinions. You can disagree with their doctrines. But you cannot deny or disagree with their experience. So that's when you live it out because no one can deny you of that. And once you do that, it leads you on to the final point. And this is post-production. This is when you take everything that you know, everything that you've experienced, and you expose it, you reflect it, and you share it. When I got back to New York City from Pamplona, Colombia, where I was born, I came back to my apartment, and it was completely empty. I threw down my bags and probably checked a couple emails and this huge wave of loneliness came over me because I had realized that I would never really get that experience back. So I got into my bed and I pretty much cried until I fell asleep. But I, I remember this point because I knew that I had to get a, to work in a couple days and start working on this film. But I knew, again, that I would not have that experience back the way that I did. But I think it's important to note because, especially in our culture, we spend so much time thinking about achieving the dream and working up to it. But what happens in the moments after? Who are you the moment after the dream? I was kind of a mess. But I realized that in a couple days, in a couple months, all the reflection that I would do would be valuable. Because I think that there's things that you experience that I might not know about yet. So when I come to you, I hope that you've done the research, you've lived out the experience, and that you've reflected and shared it and exposed it so that I can trust you in that way. And that when people come to me and they say, I've been abandoned and I've been rejected, I can look at you and say, me too. And when they say, I felt a lot of love and hope and forgiveness, I can say, me too. Let me tell you a little bit about that. Because in this way, when we're sharing it, we're actually sharing our work and our stories and who we've become from these things. So, I will ask you again. Do you know who you are? When was the last time someone asked you not what you've done, but who you've become? If you don't remember, I'm asking you tonight. Because I have to say that after all of this, you will get that. And that is what makes your work truly original. I've had so many experiences, but I know that at the core that, that this is someone that no one can deny. That that is powerful, that it's meaningful, and that if that's all that you can muster into your experiences or into your work, you must know that it is valuable and that no one can copy that. And people will see that because then your work will not only be good or great, but it will be absolutely amazing because I think that's what that word is. I had someone that looked at me and said, I believe in you. And I went out on this crazy journey. So I can sit here today and say, I believe in you. And that through that originality, all the work in this room everywhere will spread. So again, I'm going to say it one more time. Do you know who you are? I'm asking you tonight.
do you know who you've become? I have had a lot of memories and experiences from this, and I'm still going to have plenty more. But I guess if you asked me who have I become from this journey, well, I guess you'll just have to watch the film to find out. Thank you.